Here in South Africa, we run a whole range of different surveys, most of which have something to do with looking at the impact of elephants on the environment within a reserve itself. We do three primary types of uh, survey. We look at habitat assessments, we do bird point counts, and we do game transects. And that lets us build a picture of exactly what's happening on the ground in the reserve itself, how much pressure the reserve is under, how much pressure the environment is under because of the impact elephants are having. It was, it was a surprise that it was a problem with overpopulation and I hadn't really thought about the fact that, that they actually impact their environment to the extent that they do. They're, they're this like keystone species that everyone cares about and everyone's fond of them and really wants to protect them. But then you also need to f figure out how to work it from the problem point of view. Um, it's, it's a complex problem, but I think that's, that's what's interesting and that's what kind of keeps my curiosity. <laughs> From the kids' point of view, they get access to academics, they get to do field work in fantastic locations, and the lectures that they give at Opwell are designed around the A-level syllabus, and they mirror it really well. So all the things that we teach in school is nicely complemented out here, plus they get to do all of the field work with it and the application of what they're doing in the lectures. So they basically provide what we can't do in the classroom, which is, you know, absolutely fantastic. The wildlife at the reserve was amazing too because even if you didn't necessarily see an animal, just like the trip there and like the excitement of oh what, what do you see and just like the whole like view was just amazing, fantastic. Really. The kids really look forward to the safari. They look at the diving with a bit more caution because, you know, it's something that a lot of them have never done before. It's a scary prospect going that deep underwater. Um, so we do get a lot of kids who are nervous doing it, but to be honest, the instructors are great. They persevere with them. They take them aside and give them one-to-one -one if they need it. And usually by the end, the majority of the kids have done it. And whilst it was difficult, they're really pleased that they've stuck with it. And, you know, they've come out really well from it. I learned to dive and I've learned to love it. I absolutely love it. I feel like I've been born to dive and whenever I come out of the water I just have a huge smile on my face and it's a whole new world that one can experience if you just go swim with the fish. You have lots of colorful fish surrounding you. There's always something new to see, always something new to experience. The thing with Sedwana Bay is that uh, it's relatively unknown, uh, particularly internationally, uh, compared to places like Kruger and the Drakensberg, um, but actually the first World Heritage Site named in South Africa, and we have all of the, the big megafauna, so people come to Africa to see the lions uh, and to see the elephants, uh, and then they come to Sedwana and they experience manta rays and uh, bottlenose dolphins swimming with the kids and uh, spinner dolphins playing with the boats, uh, humpback whales with their calves breaching right next to the boats and it, it's got a really big wow factor. A, a large part of the marine site is, is really introducing the students to the marine world. Uh, a lot of uh, the students come out here without a lot of knowledge about what's going on under the water. You get to uh, experience a, a huge diversity of marine life uh, that's on a par with the other pristine sites around the world, places like Galapagos. And uh, you know, it's just, you can't begin to describe in, in 20 seconds the amount that you can see underwater in, in Sedona Bay. It's, uh, it's something that will take years for people to see everything. Mm -hmm. 